On December 12, 2025, something emerged from the darkness. A robotic telescope in Ireland was tracking the lunar surface when a sudden violent flash of light appeared. We caught a lunar impact live, and I have to be honest, the footage is deeply unsettling. Earlier this month, astronomers recorded a brief but unmistakable flash of light on the moon, the result of a small space object striking the lunar surface at extreme speed. What makes this event notable is that it was captured live by a ground-based telescope, offering a rare real-time look at a lunar impact. Early analysis suggests the collision may be linked to debris from the Gemini meteor shower, a well-known annual meteor stream. In this video, we will break down what was observed, why it matters scientifically, and what it tells us about ongoing activity around the moon. It's not just a spark on a screen, it's the physics of the void stripped bare. A tiny rock, no bigger than a marble, was drifting through the cold at 35 kilometers before it slammed into the lunar dust. Because the moon has no atmosphere to slow it down, that kinetic energy didn't burn up. It exploded into a burst of superheated plasma. We were passing through the debris of 3200 Phaethon, a rock comet that is slowly shattering in the deep. It's a warning. As we talk about building bases in that silent gray dust, we are realizing that we're stepping directly into a cosmic firing range. Today, we're breaking down the December 12th incident and why the moon is far more dangerous than we ever admitted. To understand why that flash near the Langrenes crater is so unsettling, you have to look past the light and focus on the math. I'll be honest, I'm not usually one for cold equations, but in the void, the math is the only thing that's real. On Earth, we're used to things having a certain weight or impact. If you throw a pebble at a wall, it bounces. If you drop a marble, it rolls. But in the vacuum of space, weight is a lie. The only thing that matters is velocity. The object that hit the moon on December 12th was moving at 35 kilometers. To put that in perspective, a bullet from a high-powered rifle travels at maybe one kilometers. This piece of debris was moving 35 times faster. At those speeds, the physics of the world we know simply stops working. When that rock hit the lunar surface, it didn't just crash or thud. It underwent a process called impact vaporization. Imagine the kinetic energy of a speeding car concentrated into something the size of a grape when it touches the solid ground. That energy has to go somewhere. It happens so fast that the rock doesn't even have time to break apart. It instantly converts into heat and light. What gets me is that there is no fire. We see a flash and our brains think explosion, but there is no oxygen on the moon to feed a flame. Instead, what we're seeing is a burst of superheated plasma. For a millionth of a second, the point of impact becomes a miniature star, a pocket of gas so hot it glows with a blinding intensity that can be seen through a telescope a quarter million miles away. And it all happens in total crushing silence. No shockwave through the air, no deafening boom, just a sudden violent transformation of matter into light. Sometimes, I think we underestimate how quiet the universe can be, even when it's being violent. On Earth, our atmosphere is a shield. It catches these tiny bullets and burns them up miles above our heads, turning them into harmless streaks of light we wish upon. But the moon, the moon is naked. It's a world without a filter. Every grain of sand and every stray pebble in the drift has a direct line to the surface. It's a reminder that out there in the darkness, even the smallest thing can become a weapon if it's moving fast enough. But as unsettling as the physics are, there's another layer to this. Most lunar impacts are random stray rocks that have been wandering for millions of years. But this one was different. It didn't feel like a random accident. It felt like part of a, a pattern. And when researchers started looking at where this bullet actually came from, the story went from a simple physics lesson to something much more haunting because this wasn't just any rock, it was a piece of a ghost. Where did this thing come from? That's the question that turns a scientific observation into a cosmic mystery. When astronomers traced the trajectory of that flash, they realized it wasn't a lonely traveler. It was a fragment of the Geminids. But unlike most meteor showers that come from icy comets, those dirty snowballs of the outer solar system, these come from an object called 3000. Faithowen is what scientists call a rock comet. And I'll be honest, it's a bit of a freak. It's a five kilometers wide chunk of rock that follows a brutal orbit, diving closer to the sun than almost any other named asteroid. 
At its closest point, it reaches temperatures hot enough to melt aluminium. I can't shake the feeling that Phaethon is a victim of its own path. As it plunges into that solar furnace, its surface doesn't just melt, it literally shatters. It cracks and explodes under the thermal stress, leaving a trail of ghostly debris drifting through the void. The flash we saw was the moon essentially driving through the shrapnel of this crumbling giant. What gets me is the scale of time involved. This grain of sand had been circling the sun for eons in the darkness, surviving the heat of a thousand orbits, only to vanish in a millisecond against the lunar grey. It's a reminder that the silence of space is rarely as empty as it looks. Some researchers wonder if Phaethon is a dead comet, a skeleton of ice, while others push back, arguing it's just a strange asteroid coming apart due to the sun's intensity. I don't know if that idea is right, but it's hard not to wonder what else is hiding in that debris stream. Here's the unsettling part. If we're seeing these impacts live now, it suggests the debris field might be much denser than our models predicted. If the moon is currently standing in a cosmic firing line, we have to ask a question that most people are avoiding. What happens to the people we're about to send up there? Here's the part that really keeps me up. Right now, we are in the middle of a new space race. We aren't just looking at the moon through telescopes anymore. We're planning to move back. NASA's Artemis missions and the habitats planned by other nations aren't just about planting a flag and leaving a footprint. We want to build. We want to stay. But when you see a live impact like the one near Langrinus, you start to look at those blueprints through a different lens. On Earth, we worry about the weather, rain, wind, maybe the occasional storm. But on the Moon, the weather is a constant invisible rain of micrometeoroids that you never see coming until it's too late. I'll be honest, I think we sometimes underestimate how hostile the silence of the void can be. We talk about the Moon as the eighth continent, but continents on Earth have a thick, protective atmosphere. The Moon is a world without a shield, Every marble-sized rock we've talked about is a potential habitat killer. Some researchers argue that the risk is manageable, that the moon is vast and our bases will be small targets. But others push back, and this is the part that messes with my head. It's not just about a direct hit. In the moon's low gravity, when an object slams into the ground at 35 kilometers, it creates a secondary impact. It throws up a curtain of jagged lunar dust and rock shards called ejecta. Because there's no air to slow them down, these shards can travel for miles, moving like supersonic shrapnel across the horizon. You could be miles away from an impact and still be in the line of fire. What gets me is the psychological toll of that reality. Imagine living in a lunar habitat, knowing that at any millisecond, without a single sound of warning, a stray piece of 3200 Farthon could punch through your roof. It makes our dreams of colonization feel incredibly fragile. Are we really ready to live in a place where the darkness is constantly throwing bullets at us? Or are we just arrogant enough to think we can conquer the drift? I don't know if we've truly reckoned with the violence of the lunar frontier. Every flash we record is a data point for our survival, but it's also a reminder that the universe doesn't care about our missions or our timelines. It just keeps moving. We are moving into a neighborhood that has been under heavy bombardment for four billion years. And it isn't going to stop just because we've arrived. It's a chilling thought, but maybe that's the price of becoming a multi-planetary species. We have to learn to live in the crosshairs of the void. In the end, that flash near Langrinus is just one tiny event in an indifferent universe. The moon has been taking hits like this for four billion years, and it will keep taking them long after we are gone. But for those few frames in December, we were connected to that violence. We saw the void reach out and touch something real. We often underestimate the silence of space. But the moon isn't just a dead rock. It's a scarred witness that has spent eons protecting us from the very same drift that caused this impact. The darkness is finally starting to reveal its secrets. We are left with an unsettling glimpse of light in the eternal night. A beautiful, terrifying reminder of the firing range we call home. If this journey into the restless nature of our moon moved you, subscribe and leave a like to help us keep our eyes on the horizon. To support our path deeper into the unknown, you are always welcome to become a member of our community. Until next time, keep looking up. The silence is never as empty as it seems.